This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to build a balloon antenna. That's right, the balloons are going to hold up the antenna, but we're not going to use just any wire for this build. We're going to use survivor cord from Titan Survival this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Welcome back to Elk Ham Radio, and this week we're going to do something special, something that's a little out of the ordinary. We're going to take paracord. Yes, you heard me correctly, paracord, but not just any paracord. This is from Titan Survival. This is known as their uh, survivor cord, and it's a little bit more than just uh, the nylon strands. This actually has a uh, 25-pound fishing line inside. It has a, a waterproof tender or jute, and then it also has a 30 AWG snare wire in the center. And that's what we're going to use for our antenna that the balloons are going to lift up into the air. So this is just a simple diagram. Uh, what we've got are the radials down at the bottom connected to a square plate. We're going to have about 24 of those copper radial wires. We're also going to have though a length of survivor cord uh, as the vertical element, the radiating element. We're going to cut different lengths of this wire or this uh, paracord uh, to uh, do 10 meters, 20 meters, 6 meters, possibly 40. And so uh, we're going to show you the build process of taking that cord and making it so that we can attach uh, it to a radio and make it a radiating element in our design. How much fun could this be? So AC4DM has a lot of stock in and around the, the shop and the fab shops that he has there at Worldwide Headquarters. He already had a square plate <laughs> just laying around. He said, well, let's, let's try using this. We said, no problem. So KK4JPX is going to drill four holes in the uh, corners of this plate. And he starts small, and then he will move his way up. Don't forget, press that like button for this video. So we're getting our first hole drilled into the plate, and then again he's going to move up to uh, larger size drill bits as we... Uh, as we get it so that we can create those anchor points for the radials and we'll show you that build here in just a little bit love getting out the drill press folks uh, a lot of people may see some of these builds and go well, i don't have a drill press well this is a way to do it it's not the only way to do it but if you've got such a handy tool maybe in your shop or if you have an elmer that has such a tool see if you can borrow it or have that person mentor you on how to properly use it now we're doing the middle hole right in the center of this plate and this is actually going to be the hole that we're going to drive a straight uh, stake through so that we can anchor the plate to the ground starting small again with a bit and then we'll work our way up with a slightly larger bit it's kind of cool to watch that aluminum just kind of come out up, oh, got away from him a little bit there, but he's got it under control. One more bit, I think he's going to move up. Again, watch that aluminum just come up. Oh, Nelly, <laughs> kind of got away from him a little bit. Now he's got it under control. Now what we're doing with this larger build is we're kind of just chamfering the holes a little bit uh, just so that they're not uh, going to in any way scratch or cut you. And uh, it also makes it look even more professional. This aluminum shines up pretty well. It looks dirty right now, but we're going to clean that up a little bit later. But just uh, chamfering these holes uh, makes it look really nice. Do it on both sides. So there we've got it. We've got our five holes. Both sides have that really nice professional look to it. Now, we got to thinking, well, how are we going to hold up the SO239 connector on this plate? So why not use some angle iron and or some aluminum here? And so we took a bandsaw and we cut us off a piece that, again, we uh, AC4DM had some stock that we could uh, use for this purpose. So this makes a really easy attachment point. We will have to drill two more holes in our plate and in this little 90 degree angle. 
So KY4CKP now gets his turn at the drill press. So what we've done is we need to create two holes on the uh, bottom portion of this particular 90 degree angle piece of aluminum. And he's going to do an, a diagonal approach. Going to start a little bit small here. I don't think we went overly large with the holes on this because we're just going to be placing screws through that. And we're going to do one more hole just to get started on the other end. Now this hole is ultimately going to be where the SO239 is going to stick through and be mounted itself. So we're making this hole again progressively bigger as we work this piece of angle. And uh, uh, eventually AC4DM is going to get a really big bit in there that will be more than enough circumference for the SO239 connector that's going to be attached. Having these bits and the ability to do the job professionally is so much fun and to be able to learn how to use these tools for future projects. So we're almost done with the larger hole here. Remember this little ankle piece is going to attach to the base plate and then the SO239 is going to attach to this. We're going to show you all those steps coming up. So here we've got a, um, a piece of an SO239 that we can use as a, a template, if you will. We need to attach the SO239 to this piece of 90 degree aluminum. So now that we've got it essentially aligned the way we want it, we're going to drill those holes. So Chris goes to work again here, or AC4DM actually goes to work, and we're going to drill the four holes based on the, the pattern that we had. And there we go. Now we're going to kind of swage out those holes a little bit so again they're not scratchy and uh, that piece of uh, aluminum will also fit nice and flush to the base. And what we're doing is we're taking a cabinet mounted SO239 that had a little bit of wire still sticking off of it. We're just desoldering it so that we can uh, utilize this in our project and then we're going to affix the SO239 connector to that 90 degree angle of aluminum. So again, we've uh, whipped out the, uh, <laughs> the screws, nuts, and washers. Such a handy kit to have. And we'll show you installing one of these uh, bolts and nuts. I think there's a washer in there as well. So you can kind of see how the SO239 is going to be mounted. And uh, Chris is finishing up screwing on and tightening down those bolts and nuts. And then the 90 degree needs to be installed on the base plate little bit of filing so again we don't have any sharp edges that's one of the things I've learned on many of these projects with uh, AC4DM is to use your uh, your file especially when you have brand new cuts because they're so sharp and they can be ragged as well and uh, if you don't mind bleeding you don't have to do this step the next piece is we drilled some holes into the base plate that matched the diagonal holes that Chris had put into that 90 degree piece of aluminum and what AC4DM is doing here is actually going in and creating the threads that we need for the screws to mount the 90 degree piece of aluminum to the base plate. And so we're basically creating the threads, tapping that piece of aluminum for threads for the size screws we're gonna use. Here comes our screws again. And AC4DM is gonna tighten down the right screw. That one was a little too small. And there you have it. And remember, we just tap those holes so that they have the threads in them. And so this makes a really nice flush fit of the 90 degree piece of aluminum to this base plate. And you can see the SO239 is already mounted and ready to go. Just this part of the build has been a lot of fun. A lot of tools involved just so you can see how you can fabricate these things. Now we're adding the actual anchor points. These will be some bolts and nuts to hold them firmly to the base plate. And then we will actually use these connectors, little eye uh, connectors here for the actual copper wire that we're going to use for radial. So we're taking off the plastic. We hate these little plastic uh, insulators. They don't crimp well at all with the plastic on there. So we're pulling those off. We really don't like those plastic pieces. Now we need our radial. So what we've done is we've measured 24 20 feet pieces of wire that we're gonna use for radials. 
And so uh, AC4DM had some spare wire that he had picked up from uh, uh, a different Elmer or from somebody else that he knew. And he had different colors of this. We had some white, we had some blue, we had some purple. I think we even had an orange in there someplace. And so we're just making all of those radials. And what we're going to do is we're going to take three of these uh, cut wires. We're going to insert them into those eyelets. And then we're going to anchor those to the base plate, which we'll see in just a few minutes. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and start putting on the, uh, the eyelets onto those three wires. Now to get 24, we're going to actually do eight of uh, eight sets of these three wires uh, within the eyelet connector and then we'll put two eyelets per anchor point on the base plate since we have four anchor points. Doing a little crimping with that extremely nice and worn crimper. AC4DM has had that for a very long time. So now you've seen how we're building the radials. Uh, KY4CKP is going to tighten down these nuts so that those are nice and anchored. They're not going to go anywhere. You can see we're going to use wing nuts on the top side for holding down the radials. And so the radials are, we're going to pull off the wing nut, the radials will go down on top, and then the uh, wing nut will go on top of the radial eyelets. Almost done with this base. Pretty cool. Fanta White, you go. One of the last pieces is to add a uh, piece of wire to the SO239, and we decided to go with an Anderson power pole end, and then the survivor cord is also going to have an Anderson power pole on it, and that's coming up here in just a minute. So we're going to affix this wire with a little solder to the SO239. The plate and the outer shell of the SO239 will be your ground. That red wire is going to be the radiating element in the center. We also uh, took a nice little stand off there and anchored the uh, wire so that we wouldn't put any stress on the actual um, solder connection. And now you can see the base plate is essentially done even with the wire with the Anderson power pole. The next piece is to take some of that Titan Survival survival cord and let's make an antenna out of it. We didn't know if this was really going to work. The wire is very fine on the inside. It's not going to take a lot of power. Mainly we're talking about QRP based power here. But you can see we've got the Anderson power pole on there. We had a little bit of copper wire to give it some meat so that we could crimp down. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. But it is very fragile in its current state. So on the end where the wire is coming out, you can see that we actually took the uh, um, soldering iron there and kind of just melted the nylon. And then what we did is we utilized shrink tubing on the survivor cord itself. And what we'll do is we'll take this all the way up to the Anderson power pole connector. There we go. And then we're going to shrink that down. And that gives it a little bit more rigidity so that that fine wire won't be under so much stress as we use this particular antenna. A little bit of a heat gun. And that will shrink down the first piece of tubing. The astute watchers of this will say, well, that one little piece of heat shrink is not going to be enough. You're absolutely right. So we're going to use another piece of heat shrink, a little bit larger in diameter. There we go. Another piece of red. And then we're going to fit this over the cord and about half of the Anderson power pole so that we get a nice tight fit. Now this is also the shrink tubing that is sticky after it's been heated up and so forth so that it's not going to go anywhere. Has the adhesive on the inside. And so you can see we're just going to move that up about halfway on the Anderson power pole and then a portion of the larger shrink will also affix itself to the heat shrink beneath it. This is going to give us a really nice workable uh, solution so that that fine wire on the inside is not going to be under stress. Even if this particular Anderson power pole is pulled from its connection, it will have a lot of rigidity. So we're done with the base. We've got our first proof of concept antenna made of that survivor cord ready to go. We're going to hold it aloft with a string for this test. Now you might be wondering, why didn't we use a balloon? Well, if you look closely, the wind is already blowing that day. Balloons are great in concept, but if the wind is blowing, not so good. So we tied it uh, with a length of uh, additional nylon rope and to a uh, wire that was going overhead. And now we've got it attached to the antenna analyzer and uh, we did this first proof of concept for six meters. 
that's why it's as short as it is. And uh, so we brought out the uh, the analyzer, and we went up to about uh, I think it was uh, 53. 0.25 megahertz, 27 megahertz, somewhere in that ballpark, which one of our repeaters operates on. And we got a 1 to 1 1.1 SWR. Pretty awesome. Let's dial it in here. We're going to move up to about 53. 1 to 1 right there. That antenna is spot on. It's uh, You could do the entire 6 meter band with this antenna, as we found out. Amazingly good. Keep in mind, the survivor cord is part of the antenna. The length of red wire is also a part of that as well. So here we're looking at it for GMRS. Uh, we knew this uh, particular cable was going to be multi-banded, and so, in fact, it was good enough for our GMRS repeater as well. So look at that. We're up in the higher UHF spectrum at this point. So one antenna for two bands. You could also use this on two meters. Now the fun part is trying to figure out how do we attach this to uh, a handheld. We didn't have any 6 meter radios handy, but we thought, well, let's try it out against the GMRS repeater. So we needed to get out our adapter kit. You can get these kits online from various sources. We needed three pieces out of this kit. So we're just setting up the adapter there. First one goes in the radio. Second one is so that we can attach an SO239. And then our third adapter will connect to that little threaded bridge, if you will. That gives us a female SO239 there at the top, and now we can attach our cable. <laughs> a little bit rigged up there, but it works. You definitely want to have these types of adapters, folks. Just get buy you a kit, and you'll have it for life. Y217, copy loud and clear. All right, got a real good, decent copy on you. Just a tad bit of noise on you, but uh, otherwise sounding good. So go ahead. Roger, roger. This proof of concept is uh, good to go. Thanks for the help today on uh, the antenna build, roger. Roger on that, W-R-A-Y. Whiskey Radio, Delta Hotel 605, clear for now. Coming up, part two in the Survivor Cord Balloon Antenna Build. Stay tuned, and we're also going to have a giveaway for this particular build. So we hope to see you in part number two with help from our friends at Titan Survival.